From the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Well, listeners, welcome to another Ropecast, our podcast for people interested in English, learning English, and everything related to that. I'm Roger Charlton, and today, in place of my regular partner and colleague, Peter, I would like to introduce Dan, and Dan and I are going to talk today a little bit about the referendum that's coming up in the UK shortly. Hello, thank you, Roger, um, for inviting me. And we want to talk today about the upcoming referendum to be held in the United Kingdom in June on whether the UK should remain in membership of the European Union or leave, the so-called Brexit, that is a British exit from the European Union. For outsiders, it seems a little strange that Britain should be asking itself this question right now. There is there are no external factors that no, can be seen that would no suggest reason. that a referendum should be necessary now. So I suppose a lot of people will be saying, why? Why is Britain doing this right now? And there's no simple answer, is there? I don't, I don't think there is. Um, I think one of the reasons maybe is that, uh, you know, we have to mention David Cameron, who was, of course, the British Prime Minister. And in the, the run-up to the election, he promised um, to hold a referendum on uh, whether or not Britain should remain in the EU um, as, as part of his you know, promise, as part of something that his party would do if, uh, you know, if, if he um, um, gets elected as Prime Minister. Right. So, yes, I think that is one of the reasons. But maybe, Roger, you can... Tell us a little bit about the the you know idea behind the re referendum. Uh, you know a bit about the history. Yeah, it's um, perhaps slightly controversial, but I would say one reason is that a new political party was founded some years ago, which calls itself UKIP, United Kingdom Independence Party. Yes. And independence here means independence from the rest of Europe. So this is a political party founded originally with the sole purpose of getting Britain out of the EU. It has now broadened its platform, mm -hmm. and that was, I think, the, the founding principle. So I think that's one reason why the whole business of EU membership has come to be a matter of discussion again, yeah. rather than left as yeah. dealt with in the past. I wonder, too, about the, the party of government right now, the Conservative Party. It is and has been, for the whole of the time I can remember, divided on whether Britain should be fully part of Europe or on or the fringes. Old, yeah. and I, I'm old enough to remember there was a referendum a long time ago. When was that? In, was 19, in the 70s. In the 70s. Yeah, yeah. when there was yeah. a Labour government and the Labour Party was split on whether Britain should be a member of what was then the European Economic yeah. Community. We had a referendum and nearly two thirds of the voters said Britain should stay in what became the EU. Yeah. So I think there's a kind of historical parallel here. Then it was the Labour Party that was split and said, let the people decide. And now it's a little bit like well, that now, with the Conservatives, well, now isn't the, it? The Conservatives, they are yeah. divided, right? Yeah. There are some ministers who you know, are very much in favour of staying in the yeah. EU, and there are others who you know, are on the vote leave side of things, right? right. Yeah. yeah. So let's take um, one or two names then. Uh, the Prime Minister, of course, David Cameron. David Cameron, yes. Um, he's for Britain staying in Europe. Yeah. And who else should we mention? Maybe the uh, treasurer, George Osborne. Oh, yes. Yeah. He's, I, I think he's also um, on David Cameron's side, I right, think. Yes. Yeah. Chancellor of the Exchequer is his official title. Is, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. The Treasury is behind the treasury, this, I think. Yeah. Yes, he's representing yeah. the Treasury view. And then there is Michael Gove, who is, of course, the ex-secretary for education. Right. Now... Justice. Yes. So he's on the, what, what's become known as the Brexit side. Brexit, yeah. 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 That is British yeah. exit. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And um, according to surveys of public opinion, it seems to be pretty evenly divided right now. I think so. I think so, I think so too, yeah. I think um, both sort of campaign, side of the campaign are, are um, level pegging at the moment. Yeah. yeah I think. There's been quite a lot of um, information about the consequences for the British economy if Britain leaves the EU. Mm -hmm. And the material that I found seems to suggest that 
if Britain leaves, it's going to be bad news economically, both for the country and for individual households. I know that's still controversial, but... Well, nobody knows for sure, right? Mm. Yeah. So what, what data have you found? What, what does the data say? Well, for example, assuming that Britain remains in some kind of relationship with other European countries, like countries like Switzerland or Norway, mm -hmm. um, even then there would be negative consequences. The gross domestic product would almost certainly fall by two or three points. Which is quite a lot. Quite a lot, yes. And under other scenarios, um, there would be an even bigger decrease in gross domestic mm -hmm. product. And this would affect households around mm -hmm. the country as well. Mm -hmm. but these things are described as scaremongering yeah. by those who want Britain to leave. Well, yes, exactly. What about um, other aspects that have led people to f come down heavily on one side or the other? And it's not just an economic argument. No, not that. It's also immigration, which is, oh, yeah. uh, which is a big, big topic. And I think the um, uh, Nigel... Farage talks about that a lot yeah. as being one of the bigger problems. Yeah. Uh, you know, we have to control immigration. And uh, the theory then is if Britain leaves the European Union, it regains control of its frontiers. Yeah. Although, in fact, Britain does have a, does light, have a, a yeah, yeah, high yeah, degree exactly, of control. Exactly. Of so I don't, I don't really see why that should change anything. Um, well, I suppose it changes the automatic right of other Europeans to, to settle in Britain or to find work in Britain. Because I mean, I'm I'm British. I'm working in Germany uh, under EU rules. I'm allowed to come here, settle, yeah. find a job, stay yeah. as long as I like. Yeah, I've got um, a German passport. I worked in Britain before, so that might that might change. Yes. Yeah. So, so that yeah. would be a major factor for some yeah, people. Absolutely. Right. Yes. Yeah. Well, there's a whole lot more to say about this, but perhaps we'll um, have a break now and come back a little later and perhaps talk about the opinions of ordinary people. Yeah. In the UK. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. okay. That's it for today, folks. Thank you. Bye for now. Thank you, Roger. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.